Hi everyone, and welcome back to my series on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. In this episode, we will look at how we can create a hotbar for our game. This episode also marks the beginning of a brand new season of action RPG tutorials, where I continue to add new things to the same project in each episode. I will still make other videos concurrent with this series, including some that can be used with your action RPG. So if you have any requests for other types of tutorials, please let me know in the comments. And now let's get started. Okay, so we already have an inventory set up like this. We can pick up items, they can stack in the inventory, and we can also move them around. This was all part of season one of my action RPG series. So if you haven't created an inventory yet, or maybe yours work a bit differently than the one here, then go check out my inventory tutorials from last year. That should get you up to speed on how this works. The hotbar we will be creating in this tutorial will look like this. There will be a number of slots shown at the bottom of the screen. These will correspond to the first slots in our inventory. So moving items around in the inventory will also move them around in the hotbar. But you can't click and drag items around in the hotbar itself. All this is what this episode will focus on. If you want other functionalities in the hotbar, then you can either try to figure out yourself how it works, and maybe also request a tutorial on it if you like me to cover it in the future. So the first thing we need to do is create a new scene for our hotbar. I will just use a hbox container as the root node because my version won't have a background behind the hotbar slots. If you want a background, you could use a 9patch rect as the root and then add a hbox container as its child. Okay, so for the hotbar slots, we want something that's similar to the inventory slots, but at the same time, not exactly the same. To create a new scene for the hotbar slots, I first open the slot GUI scene and then copy it by using save as. I'm calling my new slot scene hotbar slot. We won't be clicking and dragging things around in our hotbar. So we can also add an item stack GUI directly to the hotbar slot center container. Finally, we detach the slot GUI script and create a new script for the hotbar slot. Back in our hotbar scene, we can then fill the horizontal container with slots. How many you want depends on your game, but I like to keep it the same as the number of slots in one row of the inventory. So I'm adding five hotbar slots here. Now we've already created the basics for our new hotbar. So let's go to the world scene and add an instance of the hotbar scene to our canvas layer. I like to center it at the bottom and also move it a bit up but try it out for yourself and see what you like. If you're having any trouble with how everything is placed, then remember to check that the size of the hotbar's root node is correct. In some cases, it can also be a good idea to set the custom minimum size of the root node. Oh, but the hotbar seems so empty now. We still need to fill it with items from our inventory and update it when we move things around. Let's first add a script to the hotbar scene. Just like with our inventory GUI, we need a way to access the player inventory resource. So let's preload it here at the top. And then we also need access to the hotbar slots. 
So let's create an unready variable for this. This is all similar as how we did it in the inventory GUI. Now let's also add an update method and go through the hotbus slots one by one here. We do this using a for in range loop so we can access the corresponding slots in the inventory at the same time. We first get the inventory slot from the inventory. And then we want to update our slots right after. However, we haven't created a method for this yet. But I know I want it to be called update to slot, and I want to pass the inventory slot to it. So even though we haven't created the method yet, I still just write a call to it here. Let's now go to the hotbar slot script and create this new update to slot method. We also need to create two unready variables to access its background sprite and its item stack GUI. In our new update to slot method, we then first check if the slot passed in with the function has an item. If this isn't the case, then we make the item stack GUI invisible, set the frame of the background sprite to zero, and return. So nothing will be shown if there is no item. For the rest of the method, we now know that the inventory slot isn't empty. So we set the item stack GUI's inventory slot to this new slot. And then we call the update function so the correct sprite and amount will be shown. Finally, we make the item stack GUI visible and we also set the frame of the background sprite to 1. All we need now is then to go back to the hotbar script and make sure that the update method is called from the ready method. And now let's test and see what happens. Uh, whoops, <laughs> nothing really happens, because I don't have anything in my inventory from the beginning. If you want to test how this works now, you can of course open the player inventory resource and add items to it. But I'll just move on to the next step, which is to connect the inventory's updated signal with the hotbar's update method. Now the hotbar should be updating when we pick up items and when we move items around in the inventory GUI. Wait, this isn't updating when we move things around. How can this be? Well, at the moment, the updated signal is only emitted from the inventory model when a new item is inserted in any slot. But we also want it emitted when items are removed from a slot or when they are inserted into a specific slot. So. Let's emit the signal these two places as well. And then test again to see what happens. And now we actually have our hotbar up and running. However, I will just show you one final thing that I like to change in the inventory GUI. But before I do that, I'm quickly going to add a few comments on how you can support my work on this channel. First of all, you can of course like and subscribe here on YouTube. You can also support further by becoming a channel member. Finally, you can also become a member on Patreon. I have a few tiers to choose from. For all tiers, you get a special role on the Discord server, and two of the tiers also get access to the project files for all my tutorials. If there's anything else you'd want me to add as tier rewards, then please let me know and I'll see what I can do. And now, let's get back to the tutorial. 
Now that the first items in the inventory are shown in the hotbar, I would like to make some kind of simple distinction between the slots in the inventory that corresponds to the hotbar slots and the ones that don't. To do this, I first add a new hbox container to the 9 patch rack here and place it above the grid container. I then move the first five slots from the grid container to the hbox container. And then I position both containers with a little space between them. And also make the 9 patch rack a bit bigger so it fits everything in it. Even this simple little change can help the player understand that there's a difference between the first five slots and the rest. Now, to make everything update as before, we also need to make a little change to the inventory GUI script. Just before the slots unready variable, we create a new unready variable for the hotbar slots. And we then update the slots variable to be the hotbar slots plus the children of the grid container. The slots array now holds the slots from both the hbox container and the ones from the grid container, which is the same as it did before. And the rest of the script should then work exactly as before. So let's test and check it out. Yeah, now we have the hotbar working as before and the inventory working as expected with the little changes so the player can see there's a difference between the slots. And that's all for this video. If you liked the video and want to see more like this, then remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that. In a future episode, I will also show you a few ways you can select a specific hotbar slot and then use the item in it. Bye!